Today we're finally stocking the Hillstream fish tank. Let's get started. As you might know, my collarbone broke recently, but it's starting to heal up just enough to finally do this aquascape. However, that scape ended up kicking my butt. It failed completely. But it was kind of a blessing in disguise because the shape of this tank is better for a stream tank anyway. I've always wanted to scape a river stream biotope aquarium and cross it off my bucket list. This was it. I dropped in my substrate of choice, positioned my rocks, gathered my sticks, returned to monkey, and glued them with medium high difficulty due to my almost useless left arm. Did some plantings, installed a pseudo filter water pump to mimic the river stream, and I was really pleased with how things turned out this time. I loved the leading lines of the wood and the texture of the Seiru stones, but in the first few days, the Cryptocorin experienced severe melt. This was to be expected. They were injured during the failed scape, and replanting them into thicker, less airy sand, that'll cause some melt for almost any plant. Not to mention, the Wentii is from my immersed growth bin, so melting is even more likely due to the transition from land back to water. After a few weeks, the tank was extra safe and ready to go. I chose a school of dwarf raspora and a hillstream loach. This one is a zebra hillstream loach, gastromyzin zebrinus, not to be confused with the Chinese zebra loach, pseudogastromyzin fasciatus. I've been in love with micro raspora, and although my first choice was white cloud mountain minnows for this tank, they're banned in Canada, so the dwarf raspberry will have to do. The hillstream loach, on the other hand, is perfectly suited for this scape. By the way, I went to PetSmart recently, and I basically got reverse FTR'd. The worker there was asking what kind of tanks I have, and I told them about my 16 gallon ADA cube garden, and that it had six chili rasboras. To my surprise, they told me that it was overstocked. Are you sure about that? They completely told me off. I was shocked and taken aback. I didn't know what I was listening to. I have no idea how to explain how I felt in that moment. This was kind of my expression the whole time. I asked if they knew exactly how small a chili rasbora was, to which they explained chili rasboras will get much bigger. I said they literally do not get bigger than this, and I think we just had to agree to disagree. I don't know, it was a crazy experience. I didn't know PetSmart did a complete 180 and now they're on that Wallstead method, apparently. I think a piece of me died that day in that PetSmart being told off like that. So that's what it feels like. All right, back on topic. After acclimation, in they go. By the way, I've already named this guy Spermy. It's too late. Thank you for your name suggestions, but it's too late. I can't not name this guy Spermy. Maybe next time. It's always a bittersweet moment to introduce Spermy into the tank. You can see he's active here, but once he settles in, we won't be seeing much of him for a while. I'm hoping he'll get comfortable enough to at least show up during feeding times. Same goes for the dwarf rasboras, actually. They are always pretty shy for quite some time until they truly settle in and realize there's nothing in here that's gonna harm them. I may increase their school in the future. After the first day of settling in, it's time to feed them for the first time. Took them a few times to realize there was food, but their feeding response is honestly not too bad. I was expecting worse. This will get them to be more comfortable and use more space in the tank and explore. As I predicted, Spermy will not be making an entrance. A few days later, I was finally able to get in touch with my shrimp guy and buy a bunch of low-grade shrimp for a cheap price. He really hooked me up this time. There's at least 50 shrimp in this little bucket. It's mixed gray cherries and neocaridina, but the occasional caridina shrimp gets accidentally scooped up as well. Drip acclimation is always best for shrimp, and I like to use this non-fancy makeshift inline tubing technique. You basically start it like you would a gravel vac, and then tie a loop and tighten the loop until the water flow becomes a slow trickle. Very easy, very effective. Now it's a pretty good sign when you dip them into the tank and they've already become more interested in what's on the net than their new environment. Also when they're already in the mood. Yo, these guys barely made it into the tank and they're already feeling it. This one needs a good bonking for sure, man. It's super satisfying to see the shrimp graze on the bacteria bloom on the wood. They absolutely love eating it and it's cleaning the wood at the same time. The reason why I stick to low grade cheap shrimp is because I still don't yet care enough for specific high grades to fork out five to 10 bucks per shrimp, or even worse, 30 bucks per shrimp or more. I don't have that kind of disposable income. This hobby is expensive enough. Look, I already played Jedi mind tricks on myself in order to make purchases of rocks and sticks and sand. Don't make me go any further into insanity. But the main reason is that in my opinion, a shrimp is a shrimp. And no matter what kind of shrimp it is, 
They are freaking cool. I've been mesmerized by small aquatic creatures since I was five years old. These small shrimp are so interesting to look at. As with my other tanks, I've already spent hours every day just looking at what's happening in this tank. The shrimp make it almost impossible to look away. I'm carried away into their magical little world and it's so accessible and it's a few steps away from my room. I'm sure it's also much healthier for my mind and mental health than scrolling TikTok endlessly. A few more days have passed, and the Crypt Wentii and Wentii Green are making very clear comebacks. Each plant that I've planted have shot out at least two new leaves, and they're growing fast. My vision for this tank is for the Crypts to become dense. Thanks to the Shrimp Army, Spermy, and a couple more curious Rasporas, the melted Crypts and Leaf Loader have been nicely cleaned and managed. And now these plants are set up for very successful regrowth. So let me know what you guys think about this scape. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please support the channel by hitting that thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. See you in the next one and don't forget to get your hands wet. No cap, that could be fast, she wanna clap. 81 Fahrenheit, my boys get that whap. Put it on my tap, 3 to 1 ratio, breeders on the map. Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin dot, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rod from Carisiformes to Parachirodon. Hold on, there's not another fish that you can wish for. Lit fam says, I finna one, I finna gone. Three days without fur.